Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. Since childhood, Shang Shi has been trained to be a great Kung Fu warrior. Now he must use his skills to protect his mother's village and prevent humanity from being destroyed by a soul-sucking mythical being. Today we will recap the story of the 2021 movie, Shang Shi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. The Legend of the Ten Rings has been told for thousands of years, and with each generation the story continues to grow. At its center is a man. Some say he found the rings in a crater, others say it was in a tomb, but what everyone knows is that the rings granted him the powers of a god and the gift of eternal life. The man could use these blessings for good, but instead he decided to use them to get what he wanted most, power. Wen Wu fought wars against hundreds of peoples and used the powers of his rings to win the battles single-handedly. As the years went by, his popularity grew, and he managed to assemble his own army that, over the centuries, spread to every corner of the planet. They moved through the shadows, overthrowing governments and changing the course of history. Until, in 1996, after chasing money and power for a thousand years, Wen Wu discovered a new ambition. The man now wanted to find Ta Lo, a hidden village full of mythical creatures and ancient magic, where people practice the martial art of the gods. During his search, in the middle of the forest, something strange happened and the trees began to move. While trying to dodge them, the driver loses control of the vehicle and everyone falls into the abyss, except Wen Wu who managed to get out of the car in time. Hours later, while walking alone through the forest, he found the entrance to Ta Lo, however, the village was guarded by a woman. Ying Li orders him to leave, but Wen Wu decides to duel her. At that moment, the warrior dodges her opponent's attacks and uses all her knowledge of martial arts to defeat him. With light, precise blows, the woman dominates her opponent and, for the first time since taking possession of the rings, Wen Wu loses a fight. When attacked by the rings, Ying Li manages to control them and uses the magic of the objects to hurl her enemy away. By irony of fate, the two warriors eventually fell in love and had two sons. Ying Li tells Shang Shi, her eldest son, that where she comes from people are empowered by the magic of the Great Protector, who manifests in the form of a dragon. When she left Ta Lo, the woman lost her powers, but she was still a great fighter. She hands Shang a necklace and says that if one day he feels lost, that stone will help him find his way home. Almost 20 years have passed and Shang wakes up for another day of work. Beside his bed is a postcard, with a dragon drawn on the back. The sender's address was from Macau, China, and the boy currently lives in San Francisco. Shang works as a valet in a hotel together with his best friend Katie. She is passionate about racing cars and takes every opportunity to go for a ride. Although he thinks this is a bad idea, Shang decides to accompany her on this adventure. At night, they go out with a couple of friends and tell John how they met Sue, his girlfriend. The trio met in high school and Sue is the only one with an established career. Although Katie has graduated from college and Shang is fluent in four languages, they are happy in their jobs as valets. After dinner, they reflect on what Sue has said and wonder if they should be more responsible. However, they decide to leave it for another time and spend the evening drinking at a karaoke bar. The next morning, Shang goes to Katie's family home so that they can go to work together. While the girl is getting ready, Mrs. Chen invites the boy to have breakfast with them. Waipo, Katie's grandmother, can't wait for the two to get married, but Shang assures her that they are just friends. On the bus, on the way to work, a man approaches and orders Shang to hand over his necklace. The boy walks away from him, but is approached by two other guys. Katie tries to intervene and ends up having her head thrown against the window. Seeing his friend being hurt, Shang becomes furious and goes after the guy who attacked her. The young man manages to knock him down with a single punch and has to fight off the other two guys who keep trying to steal his necklace. In that instant, Katie is taken by surprise. Although she has been friends with Shang for more than 10 years, she never imagined that the boy could be a martial arts master. After his partners are defeated, Razor enters the scene. The man has had one of his hands ripped off, and in its place is an extremely sharp sword that he uses to attack Shang. The boy manages to dodge his opponent's blows, but as a consequence the bus ends up being destroyed. Every time he misses an attack, Razor cuts off a part of the vehicle, and the brakes are the first to go. As the bus rumbles through the city, the fight continues, and the driver collapses after hitting his head on the steering wheel. As a result, Shang must take over the driving and is attacked while trying to prevent a traffic accident. Just as he was about to lose his head, Katie shows up to save him and hits Razor over the head with a fire extinguisher. She takes the wheel while her friend continues the battle. The boy has the idea of luring his opponents into the second wagon, which is almost separating from the front of the vehicle. To do this, Shang directs Katie to turn right when he gives the signal. The young man uses his blows to make the bandits retreat to the second car and orders the passengers to run to the front. 
At that instant, he pulls the rope that tells the driver to stop the bus, and Katie understands that this is the signal for her to make the turn. The plan works and Shang manages to get rid of Razor. The problem now is to stop the bus before it reaches the sea, which is just ahead. Then Katie purposely throws the bus onto the parked cars and the impact causes the vehicle to slowly stop. Despite the serious accident, all the passengers get out without serious injuries and Shang realizes that his necklace has been stolen. A few seconds before being thrown onto the road along with the wagon, Razor managed to grab the jewel. Immediately, Shang rushes to his apartment and starts packing to go to Macau, where his sister is supposed to be. Since those guys were after his necklace, now they must go and get the jewel that is with Xiaoling. Furious, Katie demands answers about what just happened and Shang tells her that those guys who attacked them on the bus were sent by his father. The boy is afraid that they will hurt his sister, so he needs to go to China and Katie says she will accompany her friend on this trip. During his childhood, after Ying Li died, Wen Wu began to train his son. From sunrise to sunset, Shang had to learn all the possible ways to take a person's life. Qiaoling, being a woman, was forbidden to train, so she practiced martial arts in hiding after watching her brother. At the age of 14, Shang was already a great master and was sent by his father on his first mission. However, the boy could not take the life of the man who eliminated his mother, so he decided to run away. Since then, he has never seen his father or sister again. When they arrive at the given address, the pair is met by a security guard who takes them to a club. There, they are met by a young man who claims to have become a big fan after watching the footage of what happened on the train. John John takes Shang to a fighting ring, where Wang duels a green monster known as the Abomination. When the creature goes to attack the sorcerer, Wang opens a portal, causing the abomination to punch himself in the face. In this way, he wins the fight. Seeing such brutality, Shang says he will not fight, but changes his mind when John John reveals that the winner will win a big cash prize. However, as he enters the ring, the boy is in for a big surprise and discovers that he will have to duel against his sister. The girl attacks him with all her anger and Shang can barely dodge her blows. He knows that Xiaoling feels anger for having been abandoned and tries to calm her down. However, she only stops attacking when she finds out why her brother went there, and yet she leaves the ring only after knocking him out. Minutes later, while recovering, Shang discovers that his sister is the owner of that club. The young woman recalls that before she left, her brother promised her that he would return in three days, but this never happened. Shang asks why Xiaoling sent him the postcard, but she assures him that she didn't send anything to her brother. Just then, the club is raided and the girl flees through a secret exit, leaving Shang and Katie behind. The boy then breaks the glass and escapes through the side of the building with his friend. Soon after, Wenwu's soldiers appear and Shang decides to stay behind and fight them while Katie runs to the elevator. The young man must duel great warriors while holding on to the bamboo columns, but ends up being knocked down and falls a few floors. Meanwhile, one of the men finds Katie and tries to eliminate her. While dodging the attacks, the girl gets hung up on one of the columns and Shang has to run to save her, as the bamboo is about to break. On the way, he knocks down some soldiers and finally manages to hold on to his friend. At this point, one of the enemies uses his baton to electrocute him, and the boy accidentally let go of Katie's hand. During the fall, she is saved by Chiaoling, who shows up to help her brother. Together they eliminate all their enemies, and just when they think the battle is over, the death dealer appears and steals the girl's necklace. Shang runs to catch up to him and knocks the ninja out before he can get away. They exchange a few blows and the boy manages to snatch the knife from his hands. Remembering all the terrible times he has had at the hands of that guy, who was his trainer many years ago, Shang decides to eliminate him, but is stopped by his father, who shows up just in time. Nevertheless, the man is proud of his son's performance and says that he missed him. Katie and the two siblings are taken by helicopter to Wenwu's hideout and the man is excited to announce the return of his son. Chiaoling, as usual, is ignored by her father, who asks the guards to take the girls to the room where they will be staying. Meanwhile, Shang pays a visit to the room where he used to train and remembers the time when his fists were bloody from punching wood. During dinner, he asks how his father found him, and Wen Wu reveals that for all this time he had always known where Shang and Qiaoling were. The man tries to convince his son to take his place and command at his side, but the boy refuses to do so. In that instant, Wen Wu recalls that when he met Ying Li, everything he thought about the world changed. She awakened a part of him that he himself didn't know existed. The woman gave up everything to be with her lover, and then he decided to do the same for her. Together they built a beautiful family and were very happy. After the death of his wife, Wen Wu felt lost for many years, but now he has found a way to fix this. When his children ran away, the man immersed himself in study and researched everything about Ta Lo village. 
This is how he discovered the existence of a gate wedged into the mountains and claims that Ying Li is trapped there, waiting to be rescued. He knows this because recently the woman spoke to him and said that she needs his help to be saved from her own people. The man tells that after they were married, Ying Li wanted them to live in Ta Lo. She asked the elders for permission, but they said that Wen Wu was not worthy to live there. Therefore, he believes that his wife is imprisoned and being punished for abandoning her people. After saying these words, Wen Wu takes the pendants his wife gave his children and places them in a fountain, in the dragon's eyes. At that time, the stone sparkle and water begins to spring up from the statue, forming a labyrinth. Wen Wu says that the passage to Ta Lo is protected by a living labyrinth, but there is a direct passage through the forest that opens only once a year. To get through there, you need to know the route and the time it opens. And now, Wen Wu knows everything he needs. In three days, he intends to invade Ta Lo and rescue his wife. To do this, he is willing to destroy the entire village. Shang tries to reason with his father and shows how absurd this idea is. However, he is attacked and his sister suffers the same fate trying to help him. Wen Wu orders his guards to arrest them, and when they arrive in prison, Katie tries to digest everything that has happened. Shang says that they need to get to Ta Lo before his father does, otherwise he will destroy everything that is left of his mother's family. They hear a strange noise coming from the cell next door and go there to find out what it is. This is when the trio meets Trevor Slattery, an actor from Liverpool. Suddenly, Morris appears and Trevor reveals that the little creature grew up with Shang's mother in Ta Lo. The boy says that he needs to get to the village, and the little monster claims that it can guide him there by going through the forest labyrinth. Upon hearing this, Chiaoling breaks down the wall and informs them that her father has a system of tunnels spread throughout the complex, which is how she managed to escape the first time. Arriving at the garage, Katie takes the wheel and must escape from the guards. The two siblings hang out the window to knock the guys out, and Shang manages to capture one of them. The group uses the guard's fingerprint to open the gate and escape. Then they close the exit to prevent anyone from going after them. When they arrive in the forest, Morris gives the coordinates and Katie speeds up the car, as the trees are closing in just behind them. Luckily, the girl is an excellent getaway driver and makes it across before the vehicle is swallowed up. Now they only need to cross the waterfall to reach the tunnel that leads directly to the island. Everyone is surprised to find a place that looks like something out of a fairy tale, where flaming birds and nine-tailed foxes live. From the car window, Morris spots some of his friends and Katie has to break quickly, because while she was distracted watching all the beauty around her, she almost ran over a Kilin, a mythological creature that has the body of a horse and the head of a dragon. After a few minutes of travel, the group finally meets the villagers, who are protected by giant lions. The two siblings get out of the car and introduce themselves as Ying Li's son and daughter but Guangbo orders them to leave. Their army prepares to attack them, but they return to their positions when Ying Nan appears. The woman is Ying Li's sister and has just met her nephews. Shang informs them that they don't have much time, as his father intends to invade Ta Lo in a few days. Ying Nan then tells him that his people are responsible for guarding the Dark Gate and his mission is to protect humans from all the evil that is trapped behind it. Chiaoling reveals that their father intends to open that gate, as he believes his wife is trapped inside. The woman tells how, Thousands of years ago, her people lived in peace and prosperity, until the day the attack of the Dweller in Darkness happened. The creature arrived with its army devouring all souls in its path, and with each elimination they grew stronger. So the greatest warriors of Ta Lo joined together to fight their enemies, but even the most powerful men were no match for those monsters. During the battle the Great Protector appeared and together they trapped the Dweller in Darkness and its army behind the Dark Gate. Since then, the people of Ta Lo have guarded that gate. They create new weapons made of dragon scales as they prepare for the war to come. Ying Nan tells them that Wen Wu is not the first to try to open the Dark Gate. Until that moment, everyone who has tried has failed. And the most interesting thing is that they all had one characteristic in common. They were tempted by a voice that was on the other side and promised them the fulfillment of their greatest desires. Katie is also summoned to defend the village and must train with a bow and arrow to become fit for battle. While visiting their mother's grave, the two siblings receive their warrior uniforms. Afterwards, Chiaoling goes to train in the martial arts style that she herself developed while observing her brother's training. Shang goes to his aunt and asks her to teach him his mother's fighting technique, as she was the only one who could defeat his father. The woman shows him how to start practicing and Shang soon gets the hang of it. He tries to beat his aunt with the fighting style he learned from his father, but is easily defeated. That night, he remembers his mother's teachings, as he realizes that he will have to use the technique he learned from her if he is to have a chance of saving the village. The boy remembers that one night while they were training, some men showed up and were there to take revenge on Wenwu. 
Ying Li tries to convince them to leave and claims that her husband is a new man, but they were convinced to get their revenge. The woman then asked her children to hide in the house and prepared to fight those guys. Ying Li was a great fighter and was confident that she could defeat them. But new henchmen appeared and Shang saw his mother beaten to death. When he arrived home, Wen Wu found his wife's body lying on the floor and decided to put the rings back on to get his revenge. The man took his son to a bar, where most of those cowards were gathered. The boy identified the men who were there the day his mother died and Wenwu did the rest of the work. Shang was paralyzed with fear at witnessing such brutality, but he learned to do the same as his father in the following years. When Wenwu found the man responsible for taking his wife's life, he sent the boy to eliminate him. During the night, while they are talking, Shang tells her that he lied to Katie. He says that he could not complete the mission given to him by his father, and so he ran away. But the truth is that he killed the man and regretted it. So he decided to disappear and start a new life. Katie tries to reassure his friend and Shang states that he now intends to eliminate his father. According to him, Wenwu was responsible for taking his mother's life and he cannot allow the man to now destroy her home. On the day of the opening of the passage, Talo's warriors prepare for battle, but Guang Bo does not allow Katie to use the bow and arrow, as he claims she is not ready yet. Within minutes, Wen Wu arrives with his men and Ying Nan tries to convince him that his wife was never imprisoned in that village. The dialogue is to no avail, and the two groups start a great war. During the battle, Shang sees his father walking towards his mother's grave and goes after him. The boy uses his staff made of dragon scales to attack him, but ends up being knocked out. His father blames him for standing by and watching his mother being attacked, but Shang was just a child at the time and there was nothing he could do about it. The attacks continue and the boy must use his staff to protect himself from the rings. Furious, he directs all his anger to attack his father and manages to knock him down. When Shang confronts him and claims that his mother's death is his fault, Wen Wu is filled with hatred and uses his rings to launch a brutal attack that throws the boy into the river. As he looks toward the gate, he hears his wife's voice and flies over to save her. The man uses all his power to punch those scales in an attempt to free his beloved. As cracks appear, Dark creatures break free and invade the battlefield, stealing the souls of the warriors. Seeing their colleagues being eliminated by these monsters, the warriors of Wenwu decide to join forces with the people of Ta Lo in order to destroy the creatures. The function of those beasts is to steal souls to feed the dweller in darkness. If he gets strong enough, he will be able to break through the gate and all of humanity will be in danger. Realizing that the situation is getting even worse, Katie decides to help, despite Guang Bo claiming that she is not ready. At the bottom of the lake, Shang wakes up and is surprised by the presence of a dragon. The Great Protector emerges and devours much of the soul-sucking army. The warriors use weapons made of dragon scales to try to destroy the rest, but many end up being eliminated in the process. To prevent the great threat from being released, Shang goes after his father and tries to convince him that his mother is not trapped inside. However, the man is determined to bring down that gate and the boy must use the fighting style he learned from his mother to stop him. Wenwu decides to use the rings to attack his son, but the young man manages to control them and uses the objects to block his father's attacks. During the battle, Shang manages to take possession of all the rings, but instead of using them to eliminate his opponent, the boy throws the jewels on the ground. He reminds Wenwu that his family still exists, then begs him to stop that foolish mission and accept that his wife is gone. At that instant, a demonic creature breaks through the gate and breaks free. The monster attacks Shang, but his father uses his rings to save him. After being captured, Wen Wu gives the jewels to his son and has his soul sucked out. Just as the boy was about to be attacked, the Great Protector appears and pushes the evil octopus away. The creature then backs away and flies toward the village. Shang joins his sister and climbs onto the dragon, which uses the water currents to trap the demon. However, by feeding on new souls, the creature becomes even stronger and is able to break free. He grabs the dragon and begins to suck out its soul. Guang Bo intends to shoot the monster in the throat, but is soon attacked and has his soul stolen. While sucking the soul of the Great Protector, the beast grabs Qiaoling and her brother must use his rings to save her. Just as the demonic octopus was about to get the dragon's soul, which would make him invincible, Katie launches an arrow and manages to hit his neck. At that moment, the dragon returns to the water and manages to trap the enemy again. Then Shang takes the opportunity to strike it with his rings and uses his new powers to explode the creature's chest, also eliminating its entire army. Upon returning to the village, the boy is dismayed to see dozens of bodies scattered on the ground, but at the same time he is relieved to know that his friend is okay. That night, the survivors pay a beautiful tribute to all those who gave their lives to protect the village. Some time later, 
Shang and Katie meet up again with their couple of friends and tell them about the challenges they had to face in Ta Lo. Obviously, Su and John don't believe a word of it, until Wang appears in the middle of the restaurant through a portal and summons the pair to accompany him. They then say goodbye to their friends and follow the sorcerer, leaving all the customers in the establishment not understanding what is happening. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.